Hey there, this is Kamal and in this video we'll be looking at how we can host a Laravel based website on a shared web hosting without using NSSH. So let's get started. Alright, for this video we'll be using a hosting service called as Bigrock. So Bigrock is a really affordable hosting service which you can use to get your website up and running pretty easily and pretty quickly. And right now they have a sale going on for all of the plans currently available for the shared web hosting. As you can see on the home page, they have a discount of 75% off on shared web hostings using the coupon best deal. Similarly, there are also other options available and all of these have their own offers. But for this scenario, we'll be looking at the shared web hosting services mm -hmm. and all of these have the plans with offers as well. So I'll link the website in the description down below. From there, you can go there and check out all the offers available right now. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's see how we can host our website onto this platform as well. So first things first, let's sign into my own account. Alright, so I have the multi-domain Linux hosting right now. What I'll do is I'll open my managed web hosting panel. Alright, so this is the C panel that they are providing for this particular hosting service. So what we'll be doing is that we'll be installing our Laravel application onto this particular hosting service. And there are two ways that we can do that. The first way is to use the Softaculous application installer. So here at the bottom, you can see we have the Softaculous app installer. Apart from that, we also have the scripts at the bottom, which are readily available. So if I click on Laravel, that's going to open the Laravel version. And here I can click on install and it's going to ask me the location of where I want this to be installed. I can leave this as empty and that's going to install in the root directory. And if I click on install, then it's going to install a fresh Laravel application, which is a version 9.5.2 onto my root directory. But since I don't want that to happen, I want my own specific Laravel project to be hosted here. What I'll do is that I'll go back to my hosting service and in here I'll use the terminal option that they have provided. So go to the advanced section and click on terminal. And that's going to open a new terminal instance right inside of your browser. So from here, what we can do is that we can list out all the directories which are available for us in this particular server. So I can cd into public underscore html. And if I list it out, as you can see right now, we don't have any files, but we will be installing our Laravel application into this particular folder. So for that, let's go to GitHub. So the product that we are using is the Laravel blog application that we have created in the Laravel mini series. So let's go to the top and click on code and let's copy the URL from here. That's going to be the HTTPS URL. Mm -hmm. Then let's go back to the terminal and let's type in CD, give a space and double dots to exit out of the public underscore HTML. Then let's type in get clone, paste the URL, then give a space and type in public underscore HTML. Okay, it seems like the public underscore HTML is not empty. So what we can do is that we can go into the public underscore HTML. So as you can see here, we have the CGI hyphen bin folder. So what I'll do is I'll type in RM, give a space hyphen RF, then type in CGI. That's going to remove that particular folder. Let's try to list it out again. And as you can see here, we don't have any of that folders anymore. So let's go back out of this and let's type in git clone once again. So that's going to clone all of our files into this particular folder. So now if I go to public underscore HTML using CD command and let's list it out once again. And as you can see here, we have all the files. So now what I can do is that I can use Composer to directly install all my dependencies. And since this is a Linux shell, Composer is pre-installed. Alright, so all my packages have been installed. Let's clear out the screen. And now what we can do is that we can create our .env file. So if I list it out once again, you'll see that we have a file called as .env.example. Now what we'll be doing is that we'll be copying that .env.example to a .env file. So let's type in copy, give a space .env.example and type in .env. So that's going to copy all the content of this particular file into this new file. Let's click on enter. And now if I list it out once again, you'll see we have a new file called as .env. So now what I'll be doing is that I'll be connecting our database through this .env file. But before doing that, we have to create a new database connection. So let's go back to the tools. And in here, if you scroll to the top, you'll see we have something called as databases, right? So in that, let's open the MySQL databases. Now here we have to create a new database. So I'll type in underscore blog. Now let's click on create database. So that has created a new database for us. Apart from that, let's also create a new username as well. And let's click on create user. So we have created the database and we have created the user as well. Now let's add the user to that particular database. So let's click on add and I'll give all the privileges to this particular user and click on make changes. So now this user has complete control over this database. So let's go back. So from here, let's copy the database name since we'll be using that. 
And also let's copy the username as well. Now let's go back to the terminal and in here, let's list out the files once again and you'll see that we have the .env file, right? So I'll use nano to open this .env file. In here, let's go down a bit and in here you can see that we have the database connections and name and everything. So for the database name, I'll remove this. So I'll copy the Laravel blog as the database name and I'll paste it here. Similarly, let's change the username as well. I'll remove a root from here. I'll copy my username. Then I'll go down once again. Let's go to the username and let's paste that here. As for the password, the password is going to be. Then click on control O to save that file. Then click on control X to close that file. Let's clear out the screen as well. And now our database connection has been established. Now what we can do is that we can go to our database. So let's go back to tools, click on PHP my admin and that's going to open the database section. Let's open the database and in here there are no tables as of now. So what we're doing is that we'll be using the migrations which we have in our Laravel application and create the tables. So let's type in. Once that is done, let's go back and refresh the page. And as you can see here, we have all the new tables which are need to be migrated. So if you have any seeders, you can use that as well to populate the database. So I can type in PHP. That should have seeded out a few tables, which is basically the post seeder, which should be seeded out. Let's go back and refresh. Now let's go to the post table. As you can see here, we have some dummy data. So that is how you transfer all of your existing Laravel application files onto a shared web hosting service and set up the database and link everything and get it up and running. All right, so if you're interested in trying this out, as I mentioned, there's a sale going on right now in Big Rock. So I'll provide that details in the comment section down below and as well as in the description. You can use that coupon code to get a pretty good discount as well. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you have liked what you've seen till now. If you did then please the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.